Um, what we can do is why don't we go through even the formal portion of the AGM. Hopefully somebody would be able to participate. We'll still collect all of the votes and at least then we'll know where we stand with those members who are present. Um, if that works for you, Gord? Um, yeah, I think we can do that. Sure. Okay. Well, why don't we carry on, everyone? I think we've, uh, you know, we, you, you've been extremely patient and, and we really appreciate that. Every year, as you all know, it's very hard to get quorum. And uh, clearly, we, in the middle of COVID and having, having virtual uh, EGMs, it's probably not the hottest topic out there. And so um, at times, it can be difficult to get people to attend. So as I mentioned, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sean Davis and Gord will get into introductions in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to be your MC for this evening and uh, we've got some formal business to walk through. We've got some voting to walk through and then we've got some fun activity to walk through. So uh, why don't we get started? The first slide is just to get everyone used to using Mentimeter. Uh, what do you plan on doing this Canada Day? And if you go onto your phone or tablet or device or however you're going to be doing your voting, uh, please vote now. And don't forget to hit submit. Submit is where you'll see the numbers changing and things getting added onto the screen. So right now we're sitting at four, 15 votes. 17. We're almost there. Come on, everyone. I know we can do it. We're almost there. And so for all of the voting, this is what you'll use to do your voting. Um, as I say, you'll see a question that'll pop up on whatever tablet you're voting on, uh, whatever tool you're voting on, and then just don't forget to hit submit. That's, that's how all of the votes get captured. One of the great things about using Mentimeter is that we're able to print off a PDF of all of the results. And so it will allow us to keep track of all of the votes after the fact. And just for a little bit of fun today, what is one word that describes your day today? Hmm. Wait, only one word? <laughs> <laughs> Hackathon fragmented, wearing and sweaty. And you can enter more than one word. So it looks like it's been kind of a crazy day for people. I know I've heard from a few people, it must be a full moon. Looks like we've got 23, 25 submissions. Thank you, everyone. Um, we are now going to move into the formal business. Uh, we're still going to continue using Mentimeter for the voting. Gord is going to walk us through all of the um, session and so I will hand it over to CPRS Calgary Board President Gord Hawker. Round of applause. Hey, hey everybody. Thanks very much. Thank you, Sean. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, you know, it's, it's really, I don't know, it's always really great to see so many faces. I just wish we could be there in person and have the usual chats and hugs and all of those things that everybody enjoys. Um, but until then, we've got Zoom, and I guess it's the next best thing, right? Um, so speaking of Zoom, I, I want to do a quick acknowledgement of the two, uh, uh, I want to acknowledge the support of CPRS uh, National Board and the National Office for making this Zoom account available to all of the chapters across the country. Um, for us to use as our, at our AGMs like this and as well as other events and meetings. So it's been really useful. So um, Kiki is on, Kiki Kluche, who is our Acting Executive Director at the CPRS National Office, is, um, is on the call today. So thank you very much, uh, Kiki and team. We do appreciate it. It's, it's, it's coming in really handy. We've used it a, a number of times. So um, 
Also thanks to our events dynamic duo, Sean uh, Davis and Sarah Roberts for organizing this event and for arranging our online voting and the mentee usage and the fun stuff that we have, have coming up later. Um, as most of you know, the annual general meeting is, is really a formal administrative requirement uh, of our chapter bylaws. So we're gonna try and keep the business portion moving as fast as we can once we get our quorum. Uh, and, but um, I, I also wanna stress that it's all, the AGM is also your opportunity to understand the inner workings of your society, of your professional association, and to ask some questions and provide your input and your feedback um, to your local board. So we are all volunteers, we're doing what we can, and, um, and, and we, we, you know, we, Organize and, and, and govern this organization at your, at, at your uh, uh, request. So uh, if you have feedback, we need to hear it. And engagement is, is, is very, very important to us. Um, so with that, uh, how are we doing? Any words on further, uh, further uh, quorum? Uh, we're still not officially into uh, to calling things to order just as yet, but um, uh, we can go through the agenda and then check back with you after that. So. Um, this is the way things are going to run over the next hopefully about 30 minutes. I'm going to try my best, um, although as usual I'm wordy. Uh, approval of our, our 2019 AGM minutes, uh, followed by portfolio and committee updates. We decided this year because we want to kind of keep this moving that rather than have each of us, each of our board members speak individually, <clears throat> we've asked them to submit um, some some brief points which I will go over uh, for on their behalf and then we can, if anyone has questions, during that time of the board chair or of the portfolio chair, you can, you can bring them up at that time. Um, so we're going to uh, go through, after we go through each of the committee updates, including the financial report and others, uh, we're gonna touch on required uh, some, we're gonna go through a series of required votes, basically one to accept the committee reports, those are motions which you'll vote on using Menti. Uh, we'll do the nomination committee report, financial statements, the appointment of an auditor, and then we'll adjourn. And then we've got a few other remarks, um, and I'd like to do a little thank you and a presentation to a couple of very important outgoing uh, uh, board members. And after that, let the fun and drinking begin for as long as we want to. <laughs> um, board, then, we've had one more person join us by phone, so I'm not sure who that is. If you could let us know, but we still need two more, I believe, to get to quorum. Okay. So um, uh, could we have that person, anyone who's joined on by phone, um, I, Gina, you've already let us know who you are. If so, the person who is joining by telephone could please unmute and just uh, state your name, please, so we know who you are and we can uh, put you on the roll. Nope. Hello? Oh, hi. Oh, hi, hi. hi. Um, sorry, yeah, this is Ranju. From Mount Royal University, I'm the person who just joined the by phone. Great, thank you very, very much. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, so that adds one more to our voting num uh, members, I believe. You bet. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. How are we looking, Sean? Uh, we are still a couple of people short. Okay. Um, so I think, you know, it, depending on what you want to do, Gord, we can continue on. We can continue capturing the votes and then we can verify those votes at the next board meeting. We could do so. Um, or I could jump to the end uh, and do our uh, presentations right now, if you would like. I'm all about being flexible and uh, you can't see me, but I'm dancing now. <laughs> <laughs> we could certainly do that and that may get us our, 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 our enough time to, to bring in the, the official members, if you would like. So that would be jumping to the other, uh, other remarks section, which means, Sean, you don't really need, I don't think, you don't need to add, uh, move the slideshow at all. We can just leave it where it sits and I can do the uh, uh, presentations right now. It's a little out of order, but. Sure. Okay, because um, I think it's good that I don't, I wanted to make sure, partially I wanna do this right away because I wanna make sure that we have the time to do this while we have the most people on the call. Um, so this really, um, just so that you all know, um, 
it just this is just an opportunity for us as a board and as members of CPRS Calgary to um, to you know to give some to sincerely thank and acknowledge some kind of superhuman efforts of two particular board members who are completing their terms and due to term limits we can't wrangle them into staying on any longer um, and so they won't be returning uh, to our board next year and those people are Sean Davis and Nancy Arab. Um, just a quick bit of history so you guys know and I mean I know that over the years I see Colleen Killingsworth I see a bunch of people on here who who've been in, instrumental in this organization and you know as well as I do um, what it takes to remain on the board for more than a few years and uh, the the flexibility and work and dedication that it takes and so I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of um, Sean for example Sean Davis has served on the CPRS Calgary board in one role or another uh, for all but I think you said Sean six years since 1994 so uh, you all do the math um, she was incredibly young when she joined the board and just fresh out of high school I'm sure and uh, <laughs> and so Sean's been with us and she served two terms uh, two or three terms as treasurer we, we can't quite figure out uh, she served um, Two terms as events chair, once uh, one each, uh, one term each as professional development chair, secretary, chair of sponsorship, and director at large. And um, she has also been president of the of CPRS Calgary twice, and she has been a past president of this organization for what seems like forever because we keep having. The incoming president have to leave and Sean stays on as past president for in, in, in almost in perpetuity. Um, so she's been around for a while. She's been instrumental in and Sean, you know, to you personally, you, you've really truly helped shape CPRS Calgary uh, into what it is today. And we're going to miss you terribly. But, um, <laughs> but uh, we know we know we can always call on you uh, for your guidance and for your input on things. And uh, I know that you're not moving away from CPRS because I, I know you've also volunteered to do some work in the coming year with the National Accreditation uh, Board. So um, thank you really doesn't seem like enough, um, but thank you and sincerely thank you. And so I would ask everyone to please give a round of applause for Sean um, and uh, then I will present something with a little something for you, for both you and Nancy, and we will um, uh, we'll present that in a moment. But thank you, Sean, we appreciate it. And yes, you can do the virtual clap too, but I'm, I'm managing too much right now, so I, I won't be able to do that. So thank you, Sean. And now for Nancy. Um, Nancy Arab came to us from CPRS, CPRS Toronto, where she was also on the board there. So um, you're noticing a pattern here. Um, Nancy's been part of the CPRS Calgary board uh, almost with inter without interruption I, by the, what I see in some of the history here uh, since 2005. So that's for the last 15 years she has been in one way or another almost uh, uh, without interruption a part of the, the board. She served as president twice and she's of course served as past president. She chaired the uh, program and PD committee She's chaired the sponsorship portfolio as well. Um, she has been a director at large for at least the last three years by my count. Um, and some of the accomplishments during um, Nancy's time on the board include the 50th anniversary of CPRS Calgary, the celebration of our 50th anniversary. Um, she was uh, part of the board that brought in and introduced a zero-based budgeting and some new fiscal controls, uh, which uh, we're, I think, reinforcing and, re and, and reinvigorating this year in our coming plan. And uh, she was involved in developing a board succession plan and a whole lot more. So, um, and, and, and as you even already saw on this call, Nancy is our resident uh, Robert's Rules expert. Whenever we get in a, in a quandary, we go, um, Nancy, is that right? Is this how we handle this? And she goes, uh, yes, but you should do it this way. And so right off the cuff, she knows uh, how to keep us in line. So that's great. Um, you know, Nancy, to you personally, you've been, uh, I know, a treasured resource for CPRS Calgary. And um, 
we hope we can continue also to uh, to carry on the example you've set and to be able to draw on your uh, your knowledge and experience whenever we need you. And I know that you've already told me that that you would uh, be willing to do that. So um, so everybody, please thank Nancy very much. It's been it's been phenomenal uh, that these two people have dedicated so much time and effort for so many years. Um, it, it's, uh, it, we are a lucky association to have so many people who are willing to step up and, and commit their time. So thank you, ladies. Um, I wanted to show, and I'm hoping this will come through okay. Uh, I'm going to stand back. Um, we as a board wanted to present you with a token of appreciation, and I am going to see if I can get this in here. Uh, the the can, can, camera doesn't do it justice. Um, we wanted to present you each with a token of our appreciation, um, but you know, given your that unprecedented contribution and dedication you've shown, we just felt like flowers and a, and a bottle of wine just wouldn't cut it. It wasn't enough. Um, so we went out looking around and, and thanks to Lisa for suggesting this. Um, we want to, I, I have two of these. They are, um, and we'll be delivering one to each of you. They're a glass uh, sculpture designed by Canmore artist Susan Gotzelig. Um, and, and I just so that I can give you a sense of what these are about and why I thought they were a good choice. Um, this is sort of the artist's description of the work. Um, the celebration figure series reflects expressions of joy and celebration through a sculptural representation of the human figure. The tall linear figure captures the graceful beauty of the human form. Movement and light are integrated through the use of vibrant color and sparkling what they call dichroic. Uh, and you cannot see it, but inside of each of these glass figurines is a depiction of the Canada's northern lights in the sparkling um, iridescent color. It's quite, it's quite striking under light. And so I hope that one of the, these will find a spot on each of your uh, bureaus or on your, on your, your credenzas. Um, so when they are displayed in groups, the figures convey relationships and alone they symbolize individual identity and strength. So I think that, you know, this, this to me looked very much like a, I don't know, it struck me as a female um, uh, form and it struck me as powerful and celebration, uh, celebratory and, and, uh, and strong. And so for both of you, thank you very much and I hope that you'll enjoy these. I would like to hand it to you now, but I can't. <laughs> so. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's so nice. Um, I'm not sure. It, I'm looking in the attendee list, but it actually looks like Nancy maybe had to drop off. I'm not sure. Or maybe oh. you joined Nancy by phone. Oh, no. we've lost her. Now, we had a couple folks join by phone, so we just need to know who they are. Um, if you have the last four digits 0494, can you let us know who you are so we can take attendance? Okay. Okay. Uh, if you have the last four digits 9307 in your phone number, can you let us know who you are? Okay, both of them have unmuted, I saw that. I did I that. think one of them's me, it's Nancy. Oh, Hi, you Nancy. are there, good. It's, no, I completely lost my connection and I just like this second got back. Oh no, are so, you on visual? Are you on video, Nancy, or are you just on phone? No, I'm just on phone and oh. I actually don't even know the phone number that I'm calling you from. So <laughs> <laughs> this is not going well for me technology wise. I think you are on, right now on 9307 are the last four digits of the phone number. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Well, I don't know how much of that you heard, Nancy, but um, we just wanted to say thank you very, very much for all of your efforts. And um, I, you may have dropped off, but there is a lovely, gla a lovely sculpture by a, a Canmore glass artist uh, coming your way as a token of our appreciation. That's lovely. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Um, how do we look? Should we continue on? So it looks like we do have somebody with the last four digits of 0494. And if you can let us know who you are. Um, and then 
because we have a total of four people who have phoned in. So we know that Ranju has phoned in. We know now that Nancy has phoned in. We know that Gina, I'm not sure if you're still phoned in because it's now showing you as a video participant. Um, uh, but if we have, any, if any of the people on the phone have not yet given us your name for attendance, please do so, so we can capture you and make sure that we have quorum. Okay, hi, can you hear me? Yes, is that you, Richard? Okay. Yeah, it's Richard Truscott, I'm on the phone, thanks. Fantastic, right. thank you so much, Richard. Great. I'm just gonna do a count for you, Gord. Laura is counting as well, and we had Terry Kruger join us in the opening remarks. Yeah, I got that as well, and so we're now at 22, including the proxies. We need one more, and so um, we are one short. I, 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 I say let's continue on okay. with the formal portion. Hopefully somebody else joins. If they don't join, then as a board, we can convene and we can just basically vote on the votes because we will have had um, whether there was anybody who um voted nay or abstained so okay perfect all right if you can advance then we'll we'll move on all right thank you everybody for your patience we'll uh whoop uh so um our yes sorry that um okay so our first uh our first uh, slide is of course that before we can move into our board reports we just want to uh um, also, sorry, uh, to, we want to uh, vote on a motion for uh, the approval of the 2019 AGM minutes. The first business of each AGM meeting is to approve last year's minutes. Uh, and hopefully those of you uh, who received the email yesterday have had a chance to uh, review those. And please let me know um, if there are any concerns, clarifications, or corrections that we should be uh, made right now. Um, I'll give you a moment. If so, please raise your hand or unmute and speak up. If there is nothing else, then we would move on. So I'll give you a minute to respond. And if there is nothing else, if everyone can please vote using Menti, and then we will be able to track the voting. So don't forget to vote and then hit submit. And there are the three choices, yay, nay, or abstain. For those of you who just joined the call, um, we would ask for you to go to Menti, which is M as in mother, E, N as in Nancy, P as in Tom, I dot com. And the code that you will enter is 207666. And that is where we can do our voting and is how we can capture all of the votes so that we can keep them uh, and keep a record of all of the voting. All right. Uh, by the looks of the results, uh, we have a majority, so that uh, allows us to move forward. We've accepted the, uh, approved the 2019 AGM minutes. Uh, just a quick introduction um, so that you are all aware before we get moving with the board reports, I just want to refresh everybody's memory on who exactly has made up our board this year. Um, on the executive, that being the president, treasurer, secretary and past president, uh, myself as president, Josh Smith as our treasurer. Uh, our secretary is Laura Worsley-Brown. And our past president, of course, as I mentioned earlier, is Sean Davis. Our portfolio chairs and directors are uh, Kimberly Jones in the accreditation portfolio. Um, events portfolio is co-chaired by Sean and Sarah Roberts. Um, the professional development and, and programming chair has been Lisa Rushka. Communications has been Suzanne Polyak. And our sponsorship uh, was, is handled by Gina Teal. And our volunteers, memberships, and students um, were, uh, were chaired by Danielle Alfaro. Hopefully I pronounced you right. I, I, your name right, Danielle. I, I, I meant to ask you. Um, 
and uh, student rep uh, is Caitlin Marshishan. So, uh, and, and then our director at large, as I mentioned earlier, is Nancy Arab. So we will get into this. So when I, so the first step up here is a bit of a report on the president's chair. Uh, I guess I, I have to say when I returned to CPRS board about a year ago, a year after many years of absence, uh, I really didn't plan to step into the president's role. I actually came in as a co-chair on the communications side, but as uh, fate would have it, um, our then president, Tom Ormsby, uh, APR had a had to make a hasty exit in, in from both Calgary and the uh, Calgary uh, Society in order to pursue a really great career opportunity in Halifax. Uh, it was an opportunity for he and his family to move back home, and um, so they they uh, it left in late November. He let us know that this was happening and it was happening quickly, um, and uh, I was uh, pleased to um, step into the role in uh, late November, early Dece uh, December, uh, and. Um, so since then, you know, I, I just overall I'll touch on a few accomplishments, but I mean, one of the neat things about it, and I would encourage anybody who has never thought about it to give it some thought. Um, it's really been encouraging and it's been an honor to get to know not only our local board members, but also other CPRS presidents from across Canada. Um, and we do all, an almost monthly CPRS presidents uh, uh, council call. And those calls along with virtual connections through Basecamp and other means have taught me that, you know, we are not alone. And that's, I guess, my key message here today is we are not alone. All of the challenges and the accomplishments and the things that we're going to touch on here in the next few minutes, uh, you're going to hear about these, but they are echoed everywhere in every chapter across the country. They are all feeling the same things we are right now. And so that's been really validating in many respects for, for me coming in as, a, as an unknown to the president's role. Uh, I also think it points to the fact that we have to continue to work together across the chapters and to push our national board and our national office to provide really strong leadership, leadership and vision and, uh, and, and a coordinated platform from which we can promote the importance of our profession and our professional society. I mean, this is, this is why we join part of a larger organization is, to, is, for, is for leverage and, and I think that we need to work on that. So um, some quick accomplishments from my perspective as in the president's report. I just I really love that we've gelled as a group. Um, I came in early partway through um, we had a few stumbles early in the year, but despite that and despite COVID-19, we've really ended the year on an upswing. Um, we're on an upward trajectory that I think is going to help us accelerate into the new year. Um, we've recruited three great new people to come in as new board members. Um, we've, uh, that, and those being um, uh, Gina and Laura and um, uh, Caitlin as well. And we also have another new person uh, who has, uh, which we'll talk about in the nomination section later. Um, they each bring great experience and just, and, and so it's, it's really going to help spread the work a little bit, but also to, you know, really help us solidify our visibility in the community and, and enhance our financial stability as an organization. So, um, and the third is, you know, we've, we've, we've really taken a hard look at our largest expense item, which is our association management contract. And um, we've made the hard decision that, um, you know, we, we, probably can no longer afford to keep going the way we're going. And so we are in the process of evaluating RFP responses from three providers that will meet our needs at a much lower cost. So I think that that's a great accomplishment. Uh, on the challenges side, uh, stepping in mid-year is never easy, but um, I wanna thank my board members for you know, helping me out in that respect and being supportive. Um, transition to our at the at the CPRS national office. For those who are unaware, we've had a, a change in in a couple of transitions at the national office, and there have been some stumbles there. But I'm pleased to say that things are really smoothing out, smoothening out, and um, and and things are coming along. We we are seeing some progress, and so we're looking forward to working more with Kiki and her group. Um, and this year as a whole, I guess, has been a challenge. I mean, what hasn't been? Uh, you know, economic. Uh, nightmares, uh, COVID-19, uh, mobility of our membership and job losses, it's been a challenge. And I think every portfolio chair is going to echo that as well. Um, plans for next year. Um, I'm really pleased to say that, you know, we are moving forward on, on uh, a new pared down approach to our society management contract, and that should be finalized within the next week. Um, 
so that come next year we should be able to have cut our administrative costs in almost in half, uh, if not by half. Um, I think that, you know, what I'd like to see as my, I, I guess my plans for the coming year, I, I think of them as four pillars. And that first one is that fiscal and administrative efficiency of getting, getting our, our society membership, our society management pared down growing our membership by making it personal. And by, by that, I, I mean that, you know, studies have shown that people, regardless of the stage of our career, we join organizations like this for the personal connections first and foremost, and we're more likely to renew when we feel like we're really, really part of something we feel connected. And so um, I think that's what makes CPRS Cal at Calgary most powerful are its people. And so I want to leverage that and we want all our members to feel a part of our community, our PR community. So to that end, I'm personally pledging that I'm going to be trying to work with uh, Danielle next year to, and I will personally try to reach out to at least two current or expired members myself and introduce myself and get to know them uh, by telephone or coffee or whatever it takes. And I'm gonna ask that I challenge our, all our board members to take on that task because membership is all of our responsibility. So I really think that if the more personal we can make this, the stronger we're gonna be as an organization. Uh, I want to have more fun, uh, not only within the board, but at, through our membership at large. And I mean, just to give an example, our three most recent PD sessions have illustrated just how an interactive two-way kind of bit of socializing added in kind of approach ha can attract uh, much greater attendance, much greater interest, and, and, uh, and positive feedback from throughout the membership. So. Um, People stay with organizations where they feel seen, heard, and uplifted. And I think it's gotta be all of our goals to, to make sure that that is, is the way we go. And then accreditation, I think, is our, is our undervalued asset. Um, it's our secret weapon. And I wanna work with um, uh, Kim and the group to do anything and everything we can to push forward the, the, the accreditation portfolio. It, truly makes us, it is more rigorous and it's more thorough than the, right, the revamped IBC, IABC program. It makes us unique and we need employers to know that. And I think that that's something that we all need to work on. And if you're thinking about accreditation and you're not sure, you know what? Calgary has the, uh, the library of all of the uh, APR submissions for throughout history and we have them at our disposal and we hope that Kim and our group will help you to make use of those. You can do it. I did it many, many years ago and I'm a marketing guy. So um, you can, <laughs> you know, I, if you're thinking about the PRK or the APR, do it. Put yourself out there. You won't regret it. Um, so that's it from the president's uh, pulpit, I'll say. Um, and I'll move on to the next one, which is our treasurer's report. And that comes from some notes and accomplishments and challenges and plans from Josh. Um, look at this guy. He is a fitness poster child. Um, I, I really appreciate Josh. Uh, he's got a really calm approach to his role and a pragmatic approach. And he's been really instrumental in creating, cre creating a realistic budget and looking forward to, you know, and, and looking for ways to help us to improve our financial position as we go forward. So I'm really pleased to say that Josh is staying on and I can't wait to work with him further. Um, the, the notes that Sean, uh, Josh has provided, did I say Sean? I apologize if I did. Um, revenue has exceeded expenses in nearly all of our portfolios. That's great. Um, our revenue from job postings have increased 10% from, from last year, from 2018-19. Um, and our total profit from events and PD sessions has increased by more than 2,100% from last year. So that's a cool thing. I mean, yeah, 2,100%. We had a, a total profit on events and PD last year in the previous year of $114. This year, we've got total profits of $25.91. So that's pretty great. Uh, onward and upward. Uh, challenges. We ended the year still, despite some positive stuff, we ended still at a, at a $1,287 loss. However, I must remind you that our loss last year was over $5,800. So we're going in the right direction. Um, our professional fees really are the biggest cost and they contributed to more than 50% of our total expenses. So by cutting those in half, we will see ourselves in a positive position next year. Um, Josh's plans for next year. Um, 
to continue to evaluate our professional services and consider taking back some of the responsibilities that we have relegated out to an events management company. Um, we've piloted our last two events by using Eventbrite and Lisa has found it very useful and very easy. Um, so really we're, we're, you know, we're just not making the, the use, use of, of the services, the service plan that we're paying for with our association management firm. So um, it's, we just need to invest a portion, uh, sorry, just move along on that. And we also have a fair significant amount of cash on hand in our operating account, which we have decided as a board to move into savings. Half of it will go into a high interest savings account and the other half will go into, uh, be added to our GIC. So that's the treasurer's piece. Uh, now the next part of the treasurer's piece, please, Sean, is the nitty gritty, right? Uh, yes, the financial statements. So this is the statement of financial position as of May, uh, March 31st uh, from the audited financial statements, which you would have received a, a link to in your email yesterday. Just so that you know, this is a balance sheet and our current uh, assets are as follows. It's all cash. We've got $24,763 sitting in our operating cash account and we have a $10,000 GIC. So the change that's going to happen shortly in this area is we're gonna move 10,000 of that cash note over to investments. So we'll have 20,000 in GICs. We'll have 20 or 10,000 in a uh, uh, high interest saving and we'll leave ourselves with 4,700 in our operating account, which is more than enough to cover our, even our largest month. Um, so we have gained a little bit of money compared to last year and we've gained a little bit of uh, overall current assets. Our accounts payable and accrued liabilities sitting at 3927, uh, which means that we are uh, sitting with net assets, uh, unrestricted assets of $7,500 and unrestricted assets of 23336. And please, if anyone has any questions about this along the way, I think Josh is on the call. Uh, I haven't seen him yet, but I'm pretty sure he's there. And um, we can, uh, he can uh, speak to any questions you might have. Uh, this is the statement of operations and net assets. So this piece basically is our profit and loss, um, if you will. Um, we, our revenue for the year uh, was 9,319. Um, that is from dues, memberships, and st student membership uh, dues. Uh, so that you can see is an increase, a significant increase over the previous year and that it means that we have seen a number of people come back to the organization which is really good. Um, professional development events and other our, our, our revenues there topped out at 15,544 um, and 14 and versus 14,356 last year. Now this doesn't look like the 2100 increase. This is in revenues where we made the 2100% increase is in profit on those events. And that has made a significant amount or a significant difference for us. We ran rather unprofitable events in the previous year, whereas we ran relatively profitable. I don't think we had a loss at all, did we Lisa? I don't think so. Um, expenses, administration and supplies is uh, basic stuff, 797 versus 840. Ad ad advertising and promotion, 618 versus 1062. Bank charges uh, were up a little bit and merchant card fees were up a little bit. That is one of the drawbacks, I guess, of moving to the Eventbrite scenario, but it is probably still going to be cheaper overall than the fees that we were paying for an association management firm. Uh, our insurance came down, uh, although there is one more insurance fee to come through, which will be captured in this current uh, fiscal year. It just came through this week. Um, we had professional development uh, expenses. Those were our PD event fees, of, uh, or costs, pardon me, of 9,600 versus 10,000. So we were actually uh, able to in increase our profitability and our professional fees. That is the association management fee plus any administrative or, or board, board of, of directors costs. You can see that makes up a huge chunk of our, of our expenses. And that just really, when the first thing I said when we came in, when I came in, is that something we need to address? So that brings us down to a, a, a loss on the year of $1,276 versus $58.89 last year. Um, and any questions on that slide? Okay, we can move on. Thanks, Sean. 
Um, so that... We're just double checking, but I think we do have quorum, although I know that there were a couple of people who've actually had to drop off of the call. I'm assuming okay. based on just uh, having to start late, so just so you're aware, and we'll keep track of that as we get to the voting. Perfect, thank you. Uh, on the accreditation report, um, our accreditation care, chair, Kim, continues to be a strong uh, proponent of the importance of accreditation. I could see her nodding her head vehemently when I was talking about accreditation earlier. Um, she's not only is in, in, in supportive, supportive of accreditation in our chapter and our profession, but um, she is also uh, has also reached out to our recently reached out to Edmonton chapter to offer her assistance as they currently have no one in the accreditation chair position. So kudos to you for that, Kim. Um, Kim's accomplishments for the year. Um, we, we brought on three successful APR candidates and there are their names there. Um, we will hopefully be able to meet in person at our first social in September and be able to do a proper introduction of those people then um, and, and, and give them a round of applause. Uh, two successful public relations PRK exam writers this year, with two more who wrote the exam this year, this spring, and the results are yet to come. So thank, congratulations to those individuals as well. Our biggest challenge right now is that we have no APR candidates for 2020 as yet. It's not too late. Kim will be uh, recruiting heavily in the fall and throughout the summer, and we hope to have as many as possible next year. Um, uh, is that correct, Kim? Right, we're going to have bring more in. Uh, plans for 2021, promote the benefits of accreditation and PRK, uh, produce and promote information sessions in the fall for all, for all three of PRK, APR, and the fellowship, online if necessary, in person if possible. So thank you, Kim. Gord, I just want to read the names of the uh, APR. Yes, if you could, please. Successful APRs. Yes. We have uh, Amara Heppel, she is with the City of Red Deer, Ranju, who is on the call, Dr. Ranju, thanks Ran, uh, with Mount Royal University, and Samantha Peck, uh, APR with the Government of Alberta. Thank you. Congratulations to all Congratulations. three. Our events report. Uh, as I mentioned, our, our dynamic events duo started out the year as a solo act with Sean Davis, uh, our past president, covering the events uh, portfolio as well. Uh, Sean was joined, joined by Sarah Roberts uh, in the latter half of the year, and Sarah, Sarah is planning to carry on in the role for the coming year. Um, you know, this portfolio really ties in well with the pillars that I mentioned earlier. I think complementing our PD program with the opportunities for our members to uh, connect on a more personal, more social level, and just, you know, it's great to go to a PD event, but I think it's equally as great to gain a, a, a peer and to gain a confidant and to gain a, a mentor and all of those things that, that are important for us. So um, accomplishments, uh, I think that the se September soiree was our first event to make money in over a year. Yay. Um, thanks to Sean and the group for putting that together. We brought in $251 of our 1200 and some uh, profit right there. Um, our CPRS IABC holiday party had 80 guests, 61% um, IABC, 39% CPRS, and generated another $290 worth of profit for us. Challenges on the events portfolio would be an ongoing challenge to get attendees to register in advance for social events. It means we're sitting last minute scrambling and trying to decide if we should cancel or not. So you know what, folks, I will ask, please, if you see an event come out and you think, yeah, I think I want to do that, now's the time, you know, book yourself in. There's not going to be a better, uh, and something better is not going to come along. CP what could be better than CPRS event? Join us. Um, plans for 2020 and 2021. Uh, we're looking ahead to the next program year. We will offer a mix of online and personal events where possible. We'll have a September social, a holiday celebration, and of course the AGM. And I know that there are some other thoughts in mind as well, but we're being coy about that just now. Thanks. So. Communications. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I apologize. I did. I did abbreviate quite heavily on the notes that you gave me, Sean and to Sarah. So I'm, I'm cognizant of the fact that we've been going a little long. Um, 
So communications, uh, thank you very much to Suzanne Polyak and her team. Um, we've had uh, an ongoing and really an ongoing active digital president and presence uh, despite uh, the challenges of our economy and COVID. It's been really good. Um, accomplishments this year, um, they launched, a, we've launched a new website, which uh, has been phenomenal. Uh, we've implemented a monthly e-newsletter, which we've been getting really good feedback on and which has been achieving record open and, and engagement rates for us. So that's great. Um, good job, Suzanne and team. Challenges. Um, we have had fewer job postings this year, which has brought the revenues down a little bit from pre uh, but uh, some from some prior years. Um, but we're working on that. COVID-19 has certainly had an impact on that. Uh, lower social media posts uh, in the June to October range. We weren't quite ready and organized in the early in the fall uh, compared to previous years, but there was a changeover. And but we've really tried to um, uh, recover from that. And so Suzanne and her team have been really active in the last uh, several months. Um, plans for next year, increasing the job, the number of job postings. Suzanne's working on a plan to promote our, our job postings to employers, uh, make the benefits of, of posting with us more apparent, and um, increasing the number of social posts and uh, improve the engagement on those posts. So she's beginning to do a lot more tracking in terms of engagement levels and what's working and what's not. Um, and provide uh, timely information through our existing tools and finding that right balance of frequency to connect with our members. So we're a cognitive that we don't want to blast too many emails at you, but uh, thanks for joining Kim. We'll see you later. Kim Blanchett is signing off. Uh, professional development report. Uh, there we are. I'm sorry. I got to go backwards. There we go. Uh, so here's Lisa Rushka. And you know what they say? Uh, what is it? Uh, when you want something done, give it to somebody who's really busy. Well, Lisa is certainly really busy. And, um, but you know what? She has tackled our PD program with Gusto this past year. And um, she ended up planning alternating events, uh, in, alternating between in-person and, and, uh, and online events. And of course, near the end, we had to go completely online, didn't we? Um, so major accomplishments for the year, uh, we offered our first webinar, CPRS Calgary's first webinar, Media Mayhem Breaking Through the Noise in 2020. Uh, that was presented by Doug Lacombe, who shared with us the evolution of media and how we can have our messages uh, heard through the noise. Um, we had a PR and politics panel discussion that went very, very well. Thanks very much to uh, three panelists from Mount Royal uh, University, including our own Peter Ryan. And, uh, and then he liked it so much that we've roped him into the board for next year, maybe. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we also thank you very, very much to uh, Sheridan McVean for putting on a one-day study in ethics, uh, a case-based workshop facilitated by Sheridan. Um, it gave uh, the participants the opportunity to analyze and report back on ethical dilemmas presented in two case studies. Uh, and then um, what, uh, we, we really went kind of innovative during COVID and we hosted PR by the, by the pint. Um, and brought in a, an interactive and personal touch to a virtual PD session uh, by delivering flights of beer to each participant ahead of time and then having representatives from local craft breweries telling their story and, and giving us input onto the organ into their organization. So we had great feedback and, and it was a great experience, I think, for those of you who joined in, I think you'd agree it was a lot of fun. Uh, so major challenges for the, for the year, of course, always participation, engagement, and early registration. Uh, and budgets are always an issue. It is very expensive to host in-person events in Calgary and still keep them reasonable. Uh, and yeah, a comment. Thanks, Colleen Killingsworth, for the, uh, the comment. It was a great event. Um, so our challenges, our plans for next year, continue delivering a mix of virtual and in-person sessions. Um, Lisa is soliciting your feedback. Um, the more, you know, more thoughts you can provide, the better. Um, or engage with us on, in social. Uh, we're gonna try to build on the success of PR by the Pint by hosting a CPRS Calgary virtual stampede breakfast. So that's gonna be really interesting. We're looking at it probably, it looks like it's gonna be Friday, July the 10th. Uh, and it'll feature a conversation with Christina Barnes, the manager of communications and media relations at the Calgary Stampede. 
and we will hear uh, about how the Stampede has coped through COVID and also how they made the decision, how they, the process they went through. Um, oh, and that's a good point. We have a, a natural, a national virtual conference date as well. And I will have to mention that and ask you to look it up. I've forgotten it. So, um, so that is mark your Friday or mark your calendar for Friday, July 10th. Uh, we're going to, again, be delivering goodies to you in the form of a pancake uh, mix and uh, champagne and orange juice. And we will all get together, cook our own pancakes, and have a great uh, breakfast session on July 10th. Next, please, Sean. Uh, sponsorship, and I apologize, I'm probably talking too much. Received, uh, so um, our sponsorship uh, was uh, taken over mid-year by Gina Teal. She joined the board partway through the year and has been actively reviewing and reworking our sponsorship offerings while simultaneously starting to solicit new corporate sponsors. So good on you, Gina. Um, accomplishes, accomplishments thus far, I need something to drink. Uh, we've received in-kind sponsorship from Vintage Chop House for the September soiree. Uh, we received and select, uh, reviewed uh, uh, all of our packages and, and compared to and contrast with other chapters as well. Uh, challenges have been taking on a fairly new portfolio to this association midway through the year and disrupting it or reorganizing without disrupting existing relationships. Um, and current economic climate, of course, is always a challenge in all of our portfolios. Next year's plans, Gina wants to refresh our Calgary sponsorship package, tap into opportunities from the uh, resulting from the shift to online events, which might be attractive for potential online sponsors. Uh, and define and articulate a value proposition to secure more potential sponsors for us. And we'll move on. Oh, thank you. Okay, volunteers and membership report. Um, Danielle started the year with responsibility, as we mentioned earlier, for three portfolios. She had volunteers, uh, membership, and students. She recruited a student portfolio chair in, midway through the year and continues to focus her efforts on the other two areas. Accomplishments uh, this year, gaining seven new members and 45 membership renewals during the COVID-19 period of March, April, May. Um, total of 18 new members in the fiscal year, which is great. Uh, as of March 31, we have 114 full members, which is great. Uh, we've revised membership strategy to adapt to the current reality. And uh, she's began to streamline communications with our members. Uh, challenges, dealing with external factors, economy and COVID. I made that point. Uh, and, uh, and member engagement, it's really difficult. So when you do receive an email or a phone call or whatever from Danielle to ask your thoughts and your opinions, it's, she's, it's not lip service. She really wants to know. So please, please make time to give her a call back. We want to make sure we keep this association relevant and alive and, and, and prospering. Uh, it's too important to all of us with uh, APRs and, and so forth to not do that. Um, our plans for next year, um, Danielle is working on finding new ways to engage and connect with members soliciting member, more member feedback and continued alignment with CPRS Nationals programs in terms of we, we have some things coming out shortly about um, uh, discounts and referrals and also um, a renewal, a discounted renewals um, for members who are in transition due to job loss. So watch for more things like that. And our student report. Um, Caitlin Marchishan joined, uh, took over the student portfolio actually in early 2020, so she's very new to us. Um, but she's been also enlisting involvement from her fellow students to get more volunteers. So um, our CPRS student group has been really active on social networks since uh, since Caitlin came in, and uh, their um, and even before the onset of COVID-19, um, they, they hosted a really successful speed networking event at Craft, which is mentioned as one of their accomplishments. So again, found a new uh, active volunteer and organized an event. Challenges um, for, for Caitlin, she identified being new to the board uh, was, it's, was a little bit difficult. Um, we're trying to go easy on her, uh, but she's uh, overcoming a learning curve and a limited student engagement this year. Uh, as you know, most students went home early from school and were studying online and uh, so much has been up in the air for them. There are 
Um, you know, they're trying to get work terms, they're trying to get summer employment, all of those things. So morale was down a bit, so that's been a challenge. Next year, uh, Caitlin hopes to provide better support to students to deal with the online learning environment. Uh, she wants to hold a mock interview event to help explain the gap in work experience and improve uh, people's interview skills as students. So hopefully uh, those of us who are professional members who have the opportunity to hire students can help with that and engage more actively with students both on campus and off. And one more now, we do have additional board members and while they are not required to submit a portfolio report, we want to, we could not have functioned as a board without the assistance of our secretary, Laura Worsley Brown, and our board historian, as I said, call her, and director at large, Nancy Arab. So thank you to both of them. Our next slide, please. Uh, this is our first, we will now return to Menti, and I'm sure Sean has instructions for that, but this is our motion to accept the report of the nominations committee. Uh, sorry, accept the committee reports, I jumped in my notes. Um, that concludes our reports. Now we will vote on the series of motions uh, to finish off the business portion of the meeting. Uh, this motion is to accept committee reports. And so as a reminder, if everyone can go to menti.com, use the code 20 seven six 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 and uh vote and right now gord just so you're aware we do have a total of 25 people on the call uh 19 of them are um current full members and then we do have the two proxies so we only have a total of 21 and so i'll i'll let you decide whether you want to go ahead with voting or not Okay, um, so our alternative was then to go ahead with voting and then uh, what we would do after the fact. That was only if we had quorum, is that correct? So what we could do is either continue on with the voting so that we capture the results of the membership and okay. then at the board meeting, then you would basically confirm and so you would vote in the things that the membership who are on the call voted in. Okay. Alternatively, um, we can forego the voting and it just gets voted in at the board meeting um, by the board of directors, but then it doesn't have the member member engagement piece. Um, okay, we had a couple of notes pop up in the, um, I would say if people can bear with us for a few minutes, this is really continue quickly through the voting piece so that we do know that people are, are heard so uh, let's do that. Um, we'll, we'll move it along as quickly as we can. Super. So right now we have 16 people who voted. We are waiting for another three people. If you haven't voted yet, if you can please vote and remember to hit submit and that will allow us to capture your vote. Perhaps those who are on joining us by phone are not able to to do the online vote. Multitask, yeah, exactly. Okay, so that motion carries with 100% yay. Okay, perfect. That still is a majority of, of the quorum amount, so I suppose we can ratify that at the board meeting. Exactly. The next motion is to accept the report of the nominations committee, which was sent out to by link yesterday uh, by email. Um, that is to accept the nominations of the 2019-20 nomination committee, pardon me, recommendations of the committee, and approve the following members in good standing who meet the requirements of the current bylaws and regulations of CPRS Calgary. Um, and that is Peter Ryan, PhD APR. Um, thank you very, very much to Peter for uh, accepting the nomination from Lisa, and we look forward to working with you. And so again, if everyone can vote and we'll make sure that we get at least to that 18 number, recognizing that there may be one or two people who aren't able to vote via phone. Um, and just don't forget to hit submit. Yes, which I forgot to do until just now. <laughs> All right. Now we got that. Okay. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay, next motion is to accept the audited financial statements uh, to approve the 2019-20 audited financial statements as presented. Please vote now on Menti and don't forget to hit submit.
we can get two more, it looks like. I love seeing the comments pop up. <laughs> All right. Oh, good stuff. Sorry. There we go. Yes. So it looks right. like we didn't get one person's vote on that one, but we do still have a majority of quorum on that. Okay. Our next motion is the motion to appoint the auditor, uh, Rustam R. Kassam CMA, to act as our auditor for the coming fiscal year. Please vote and then hit submit. Oops. Ooh. Oh, we're getting a different display this time. Yeah. All right. Had to change it up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, one more. Uh, this is the last one. This is our motion to adjourn the 2020 Annual General Meeting of CPRS Calgary. And, uh, you know, please vote and uh, enjoy those options. <laughs> Couple more votes, one more. And it looks like the yeas have got it. All right, fantastic. Well, that concludes the business portion of our meeting. Um, and uh, we are ready now, or we had originally planned. Thanks, Colleen, for dropping in, and uh, good to see you again. I hope we can see you in person next year. <laughs> um, I've, uh, we've already uh, done our acknowledgement to our outgoing board members, uh, and so again, I want to thank Sean and Nancy for that and for their time and effort. And with that, I believe I would turn it over to Sarah. Thanks, Gord. Uh, thanks everyone who is still able to stick around for a few minutes. Before we start the trivia game, Kim had a request for the group. So Kim, do you want to share that now? And I think you were going to share your contact info in the chat box afterwards if anyone yeah. wants to reach out. Yeah, I sure do. Thank you very much, Sarah. I teach uh, public relations writing and design in the journalism arts program at the School of Information and Communications Technology at SAIT. Um, the students I teach are in their last semester and they have some really great skills and they in order to graduate need to complete a four-week practicum um, and that practic the practicum dates this year are july 13 to august 4th with some flexibility in dates so um, given covid and the move to online classes getting placements for these students have been uh, it's been really difficult to try and find placements for them they're journalism students, but I've got a couple who are really interested in a communications type placement. And I'm wondering, I'm issuing an appeal to our membership. Um, if anybody is able to accommodate a four week practicum, either online or otherwise, I would really appreciate that. Um, I will put my contact information in the chat box. And if you'd like more information or if you, want, uh, if you want to talk to me about it, please feel free to drop me a line. So again, the practicum starts on July 13th. These students have some great skills in uh, photography, picture editing, uh, multimedia uh, execution, social media content, writing, uh, all kinds of layout and design skills, interview techniques, etc. So I hope you uh, are able to accommodate one of them over the next, uh, for that practicum. Thanks, appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Kim. Uh, okay, we are gonna start this game. It's a little bit of fun at the end of the call. So hopefully everyone can stick around. It shouldn't take more than about 10 minutes. Uh, so uh, Sean, you are gonna maybe be my Vanna White to my Pat Sajak. <laughs> Feel free to chime in. We're going to start the game. It, thank you. Thank you. Lovely. 
Uh, let's start the game and we're doing this all on Menti as well. So you will have an opportunity to enter your name here on the next screen. So um, this is your chance to enter your name. Mine's already in here from me testing it. Um, so enter your name, you'll get a little emoji and you will get extra points for answering quickly. So just keep an eye on the screen and I'll read out the questions um, to give you a bit of extra time. So we've got 10 people signed up, um, 11. You get a little bing bong every time somebody signs up here. Um, give it another 10 seconds and then maybe we'll get going, Sean. I'm going to unmute you so you can vana. There we go. Thank you. Okay, why don't we start the quiz? You bet. Is everybody ready? Ready. Don't forget answer. to answer fast to get more points. Oh my God. Okay, the first question is, um, in 2008, Maple Leaf Foods had a listeria outbreak. It's held as an example of crisis response. What was the name of their spokesperson and CEO? And this time you don't have to hit submit. Yep, just click the name. Everyone has voted. Let's see what the results are. Ah, oh, everyone, everyone got it right. Congratulations, Please. everyone. That's an easy one to get us started. Now, okay, loading the results. Say that the faster you go, it looks like Gordo got it in the <laughs> fastest. Um, Nancy is in second place and Jane in third. All right, on to question two. In the UK in 2019, Kentucky Fried Chicken had a crisis when they had a shortage of what? Looks like we're just missing one. We've got them all. Everyone has voted. Oh, we've got a little bit of a mix. Chicken was the answer. So please have a moment of gratitude that you didn't work for KFC when they ran out of chicken and had to manage that. Kentucky Fried French Fries, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> they closed all their stores. It was pretty oh. crazy. All correct answers give max points. Okay, next one. Who is this? Let's have his first and last name. We've got nine more seconds to answer. We, it looks Four. like we've got nine entries, 10 entries. And we have got a whole lot of folks here. The correct answer is Edward Bernays. So Edward Bernays, for those of you that remember, was considered the father of public relations. He even put it on his own tombstone. And uh, he was Freud's nephew and he used behavioral psychology in PR and really revolutionized advertising too. So there we go. And now we'll take it to the leaderboard. I feel like I have an unfair advantage because I built the slides. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I truly count, but it's good that Gordo is still in the lead. Kind of unfair because you both have seen the questions before. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm oh, so yeah. sad. I missed the game. Is there, is there points for being last? <laughs> Prize for being the worst? I feel like I no. get those. I'm not even on the screen. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of there with you, Danielle. Oh, I didn't even yeah. get to play. Can we do a redo? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> do I start get the whole meeting again? I met no, Lisa, how there? come you're not on the screen? I Because I'm in 11th place. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I like that Danielle has her glass of wine, though. That makes me super happy. You know, I'm just representing us, like, how we would be if we were in person. Cheers. So here's everyone. I, I love you guys. Well, don't hide them. <laughs> I still have decaf coffee going from earlier. I was freezing cold, but all right. Are we on to the next question? Cheers, yeah, Teresa. Let's do it. 
I love you all. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play now. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Answer fast. Answer fast. Buckle up. Okay. So Equifax had a massive data breach in 2017. How did they respond? <sighs> you have 24 seconds because this is a bit long to read. And also, please take a moment of gratitude that you didn't have to handle the comms for it. <laughs> oh. It was kind of this funny. Is... As we were going through and writing the questions, I, I was trying to take out some of the bias from the language that we had included around <laughs> the way that they responded. Hmm. <laughs> Surprising. And they Yay! are all correct. It didn't matter which one you answered, they sucked all the way around. <laughs> I don't think that was in the bias language. No? No? <laughs> I think I answered that one the fastest. Can we check? <laughs> so the next question doesn't count towards your total, but it's just for fun. Which one of these is your favorite awful nickname for a PR practitioner? <laughs> we've got we've got 11 votes yeah is there one more don't forget to hit submit on this one nancy says we can't hear her but yes you do get extra points for meeting edward bernays oh, <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> well done okay we love a spin doctor and a party planner yeah. Mm -hmm. I particularly love Party Planner. Um. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone likes to be called a Party Planner. Mm. Isn't that what your parents think you do? Yep, pretty much. This is the last one. Don't forget to answer fast. So which one of these is not part of a communications plan? You have... 12 seconds left. I don't know if there was a submit button. I just clicked it and it disappeared. Yeah, oh. you don't need to submit. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. oh so it, yes! It just comes down to how quickly people answer. <laughs> and the winner of Ultimate Trivia Oh man, oh, I dropped right suspense. off. <laughs> oh no. I can't follow. I think, oh, yeah, you, I think you cannot count me or Gord. No. <laughs> so it actually means that Sue is the winner. Yay! 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 She's cheering you on. That's what happened. It's okay, he can come. Your mouse with the wrong arm, wrong hand here. Uh, he can come. Come say hello. We have a special Good guest, job, my friend. Uh, mm -hmm. Say hi. Mm -hmm. This is my boy Felix. Hi, Felix. Hi, Felix. Hi, Felix. <laughs> <laughs> so whoever would like to stay and socialize, please hang out, but that is the end of the game.